Hey guys, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to click below to subscribe and share. It's not just about the photograph, it's the outdoor experience. Keep in mind everything that you need to know about photography, f-stop, shutter speed, lens selection. Nice photo, I've got beautiful light now. Oh my God. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and your wild photo adventure starts now. Wow, after 20 years of photographing these amazing animals, I never seem to get tired of it. Every year I look forward to the fall migration. We're along the eastern coast of North Carolina at Pocosia National Wildlife Refuge, photographing snow geese and wild tundra swans. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and your wild photo adventure starts now. This is absolutely amazing. This is what it's all about. This is the reason I love to photograph waterfowl so much. In particular, snow geese. It's so exciting, especially when you have large groups of migratory birds coming in like this. Photographing snow geese can be quite overwhelming at first because you have so many birds in the sky at one time. It's kind of hard to pick one bird or one small group of birds to focus on. So that's one of the things you just really have to train yourself to do. Um, I encourage everybody, if for your first time experiencing this, just take five minutes and just enjoy the scene. Kind of see what's gonna happen, understand how the birds are moving, just sit back and enjoy it for a minute. Then concentrate on photographing. It's hard to isolate one specific bird or one small group of birds to, to focus on, but it's something you've got to train yourself to do or you'll constantly just be jumping around from place to place and you'll come away with no good shots. Since everything is moving in the scene uh, and the birds are flying, wings flapping, other birds moving in the background, my number one concern right now is shutter speed. I want to make sure I have tack sharp images. So I've got my shutter speed set at one two thousandths of a second and my depth of field, I'm actually shooting at an f8 right now. Um, I want some depth of field so if I have multiple birds flying together, I can get some detail in the second bird. And also, the bird itself, when he's flying 
from wingtip to wingtip, I want as much depth of field there as I possibly can. However, I'm always trying to focus on the body of the bird, where the eye is, that plane. Trying to determine exposure on white waterfowl can be kind of tricky on a bright sunny day like this. Um, the plumage is pu almost pure white except for birds that are either juvenile or in some form of color phase. Uh, the, the white feathers are highly reflective and you can easily overexpose those, those images on a bright sunny day. So on a day like today what I'm doing is I'm spot metering the gray trees in the background which are pretty close to neutral gray. That gives me a good base exposure based on the amount of light that I have in this situation. Then I'm underexposing about a stop to a stop and a third. That's going to bring my whites back to a point where I still have plenty of detail in the white areas. When you get your exposure right, your histogram should show information in the far right edge of your histogram without touching that far right edge. This will give you the most latitude when you go into Photoshop and you try to tweak things a little bit when you're shooting in raw format. snow and snow geese. This is unbelievable. The birds have moved off, they've now come back, and they're literally just kind of swarming me right now. This is really kind of a special opportunity because these birds are, are hunted animals, they're game animals, and generally they're very wary, but they feed continuously on this refuge, and that's what the refuge is all about. It provides them a safe haven to feed in winter uh, without any hunting pressure. You know, I was a little apprehensive about shooting the show again here uh, because over the years, restriction to that to the refuge has become more and more limited. Back 20 years ago when I first started photographing these birds, I could apply for a special use permit, which actually gave me special privileges to go out into these fields and some of the closed impoundments and before sunrise, before the birds got here, and I could sit in the ditches and camouflage myself, cover up with brush, and let the birds come in on me. And I tell you, when you have 50, 60,000 snow geese land right on top of you, it is absolutely amazing. And like I always say, it's not just about getting a beautiful photograph always. It's about enjoying it and experiencing everything that, that you can get out of it. And when you can feel the ground shaking and you can hear all the geese chattering and you can feel the wind off their wings, you're experiencing it. Well, with the restrictions of the refuge, I was a little concerned that we wouldn't be able to get that. But as you've seen, we have geese all over us. And this is really kind of unusual uh, that they come this close to the road. We're right here on the edge of the highway and we've, we've got geese within 10 yards of us. Um, over the years, the refuge has had to start uh, restricting access for a number of different reasons, mostly disturbance on the birds. As wildlife photography has become really, really popular over the, over the past few years, the refuges have just got bombarded with photographers and everybody wanting to photograph these birds and other wildlife. No matter how careful we are, your presence is going to have some kind of impact on, on an animal. It, that's just the way it is. But we have to do everything we can to limit that impact and you know, let the, let the animals behave naturally, don't disturb them. Over the years, um, you know, we've, there's been a lot of rogue photographers that have really given us all a bad name. And it's all of our responsibility to do everything we can to practice ethical wildlife photography. You know, everybody fusses about, oh, well, the refuge is, is limited access and we can't go here, we can't go there. Well, it's because people are out running around in the fields, trying to flush the birds to get these great blast off shots. And if you just do your homework, slow down, 
and wait some, you will get the blast off shot anyway. Snow geese, that's what they do. They come in in the mornings, they feed in the fields, they will actually get up and roll around the field several times. It's, it's kind of a, um, it's a rolling effect is the best way to describe it. The birds will feed in one area, they'll jump up about 10 or 15 feet off the ground and fly just a short distance and sit back down. The birds that were in the, the tail end of the flock, they'll then jump up, fly over the others. So if you sit there and wait it out and don't flush the birds, you're gonna get much more opportunities anyway. You're gonna get five or six big blast offs. And then about 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning when the birds are finished eating and they're ready to head back to their um, loafing areas on the lake, you're gonna get that one big blast off anyway. So waiting a scene, at, scene out, understanding your subject, and just being patient, that's where we're gonna win. The only tricky thing this morning is our angle of light. East is this way, sun's rising right off camera here, and most of the birds are, as you can see, coming in from east to west, which causes a shadow to be thrown across the side of their body. So what you need to do is, like these birds coming around right now, you have to wait for them to bank so that the whole bird is in full sun. If you don't, you're going to get a really high contrast between the bright highlights on the east side of the bird and the shadow sides on the west side of the bird, and it's not going to make for a really good shot. So you really got to pick your shots carefully. Wait for those birds to swing around, and when they do, you'll get full light on one side, and then you have a very short window of opportunity to do this. So you need to have the bird in your frame at all times and wait for that perfect moment. That's when you'll get the great shots. There's the blast off. That's the shot everybody wants. Fifty thousand snow geese is quite impressive. That is unbelievable. That's almost spiritual. That's people really don't understand how magnificent an experience this really is. Well, they're heading on out to the lake now. They fed all morning and going to go rest on the lake during the mid part of the day in the afternoon they'll head back out to these fields and and feed some more afternoon photography of snow geese is not nearly as predictable as far as their location goes as the morning hours morning hours they're once you do a little bit of scouting you'll figure out where they're going they pretty much hang in this area till they eat all the food uh, but this was unbelievable morning um, this area is really good for wild tundra swans as well. They're just as magnificent and as fun to photograph as the snow geese. So let's go do our scouting, try to find out some good places to, to photograph these birds the next couple days. Oh yeah, lots of swan activity. I'm gonna try to shoot some of that. Okay, so what we've got, we've got a small marsh here, and then right beside it, we've got a field, and the birds are really piling in there. A lot of bird activity right now. The only problem is, I don't have permission to be on that property yet. So this afternoon, what I'm gonna have to do is just shoot from the side of the road here, and then later on this evening, when we get done, we can 
try to track down the farmer that actually owns this property. So let's get a gear and see if we can make something happen. Well, this light isn't gonna last too long. It's bright over here to the east, but back over there to the west, I can see dark storm clouds starting to build already. You know, we do have reports of a possible snowstorm coming in for tomorrow, but we'll just have to wait that out and see how that goes. But this would explain a lot. Birds are real sensitive to barometric pressure changes. So these birds are feeding real heavy right now, and so that explains a lot. We probably will see some kind of weather come in tomorrow. Birds coming in. Out of all the waterfowl, swans are some of the most graceful in flight. As they're gliding in, it almost looks like a ballet in slow motion. Absolutely beautiful. Just like ducks and geese, swans also cut their wings when they're coming in to land. It works just like the flaps on an airplane. When the bird cups its wings, it helps slow their momentum down as they're gliding in to land. And it's at that moment that you want to be behind your camera and ready to capture the shot. With all waterfowl photography, the two most important things are light direction and wind direction. And for me, ideally, I like to have the light and the wind coming from the same direction. And I either want that to be from one side or the other or from over my shoulder. Most waterfowl have to have the wind in their face to take off and land. So if you have the wind come from behind you, the birds are gonna land facing you. You, worst case scenario would be get a great situation, beautiful light, a lot of birds, beautiful background, and the birds are landing away from you. The larger the bird, the more important wind duration becomes. So with these large swans, you definitely want to have the wind in your favor. Years ago, I used to rely on manual focus pretty much solely. But nowadays, with the advances in autofocus, it's really good. It's, it's tack sharp. But sometimes when I'm trying to focus on these birds in flight, my autofocus is so far out of focus to begin with, I need to just kind of manually override that autofocus, just tweak it a little bit, and then let the autofocus take over as the bird comes in. With this temperature dropping as fast as it is, that marsh is likely going to freeze over tonight. So tomorrow morning, we probably want to try to be in that adjoining wheat field over there. More than likely, that's where the birds are going to want to feed. Actually, this is a really nice situation because I can shoot the birds against patches of blue sky over here. And then back over here, I can shoot them front lit against dark storm clouds, which really makes for some dramatic shots. But unfortunately, 
I've got to go now because I still got to track down the farmer that owns this wheat field over here, so we'll have a place to shoot tomorrow morning. Well, it was pretty late last night when I finally tracked down the farmer that actually owns this piece of property. And he gladly gave us permission to come out here this morning and set up. You know, these fields are huge and the birds could land just about anywhere they want out here. So this morning, I'm gonna to try to use some swan decoys to draw them in a little bit closer so I can get a little bit tighter shot. Now, unlike most other waterfowl, swans, they don't even start flying good to about an hour after sunrise. So we should have plenty of time to set up and uh, get covered up in the ditches this morning. Talking about ugly light, but we're gonna do what we can. Now the way I like to do this, I always like to try to find me a ditch to get in, try to keep the lowest profile I can. Even though most of my body is down below ground level, I still need some brush around me to kind of break up my silhouette. So I'm gonna walk down this ditch, collect some vegetation, stick it in around me, and we're good to go. If you really wanna try to break up that silhouette as much as possible, any shiny parts of your tripod or camera, get those covered up. I like to use dog fennel. Dog fennel is really thick at the top. It's easy to break off when it's dead in the winter months. Well, many of you are probably wondering why am I got full chest waders on and I'm just in this little bit of water right here. I wear chest waders a lot of times in situations just like this because even though I'm only in about 12 inches of water, it's very close to freezing right now. This water will probably freeze while I'm sitting out here in this field. It allows me to just get down to this ditch, get all in the mud, and I don't have to worry about getting all nasty, getting my clothes all messed up. And it allows me to sit here longer, sit here more comfortable, not have to worry about anything other than taking pictures. Photographing these birds over a green wheat field really doesn't do much for me. When I do set up in a situation like this over a field, I never try to get the field in my shot. I'm pretty much concentrating on birds in flight. It just happens to be that the birds are attracted to the food in these fields. Now on the other side of this, my favorite place to photograph waterfowl of any kind is in natural looking marshes. You have beautiful tan grasses, blue or black water, nice sky, nice clouds in the background. I think I'm gonna wait this out a little bit longer. Even though it's horrible light, photographically terrible. And the birds are here, the birds are doing what they're supposed to do, but I've noticed the temperature is dropping really, really fast. The wind is starting to pick up in a very short amount of time. That leads me to believe that that snowstorm might be closer than I expect. So I think I'm gonna try to wait this situation out a couple more hours. If I could get a nice heavy snowfall and these swans gliding in through the snow, that could be some 
really, really dramatic shots. Well, unfortunately, I don't believe it's going to happen today. The snow still hasn't come yet. All it's done is get colder and colder and colder and darker. I have even less light now than I did before. So I think I'm going to try to call it a day. Well, Murphy's a bad dude. We waited all afternoon for it to start snowing to try to turn a bad situation into a really great situation. Decided to move. Didn't look like the snow was going to come in. Here it is, an hour after we left, four inches of snow. So it was a little too late to try to go get back in the field and get shots of swans. So we will head over toward Lake Madame Ski and try to get some shots of swans out on the water with the snow falling around. That should be a really nice shot. It's a slow go, um, about 20 miles an hour. We've already seen lots of cars in the ditches. Uh, I think this snowstorm may have taken people by surprise. This is unbelievable. A photographer's playground. Less than an hour ago, I was kind of down in the dumps because we had horrible lighting, horrible weather for the tundra swans coming in in the field. I should have waited it out. That's where patience is key. Now I've got three to four inches of snow all around me. Unbelievable. I'm here at Lake Madame Mesquite National Wildlife Refuge trying to get some shots of the tundra swans in the water. Uh, so far, I haven't found any that are close enough, but I'm going to stay at it. This has been an unbelievable experience, and more information about this week's show is available online. Remember, it's not just about a photograph, it's the outdoor experience. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and thank you for joining me on another wild photo adventure. This afternoon, we got, <clears throat> it's not this afternoon, it's this morning. I look cool? Yeah. I am. <laughs> All right, cut it for just a second, let me think. No, hold on. All right, go ahead. Just give me a second. Contrasty, if you expose for the white, you're gonna have really dark shadows on, on one side of the bird, on the shadow. <laughs> it's unbelievable how Hey guys, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to click below to subscribe and share.